Hello and welcome to the SC Playbook Podcast, head of NRL Supercoach Round 7, proudly brought to you by Pat and George from Mortgage Choice SCW. I'm your host, Tim Williams. It's a good day today because it's coming off a weekend that we're not in crisis mode, there's been no carnage, Team this Tuesday was pretty pleasant to us, so I'm just feeling good. Here to chat about NRL Supercoach Round 7 with me, 2019 champion, Desi Creek. Desi, would you agree, mate? I would agree. I would agree. I think, uh, yeah, all things are running pretty smoothly. I had a pretty good week, got around 12.50, so sitting around 2,500 overall. Um, and considering I only had, I, I was telling you boys pre-show, I only had one try scorer in my team, which was Mr. James Schiller, to score 12.50. I was pretty pretty happy. Mm. You're, uh, you're simmering along, well, better than nicely there, mate, but like I'd say even almost under the radar, just a past champion, just working his way back up the top and earlier than usual. You'd be, you'd be happy with where you're at. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Two boosts in. Yeah. Haven't Two boosts in. Trades. Yeah, I think I've got 34 trades left before trades this week, so yeah. Powerful Quote before course. the show, I've got all the cheapies. I don't need any more. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. I've just crowned them all in this year. Also with us on today's show for his second appearance on the SC Playbook Podcast, Random Stats Guy. Rando, welcome back, mate. Thanks for having me back, and um, I'm glad I'm back now after the last two weeks I've had, ever since uh, getting rid of Will Kennedy. Who would have known he wasn't <laughs> a good buy? Because I've shot up 60,000 rankings since leaving him behind. The stats don't lie. The stats don't lie at all. in the case of Will Kennedy, in which case they lied. They lied pretty badly to me, but no. Uh, tagging on nicely, and as you said, don't have to make too many big trades this week. It is a good week to have you on, Rando, because I love week in, week out, early on in the season, reiterating to people when I get so many messages, I'm 60K, I'm 80K, I'm 100K, do I throw in the towel, am I wasting my time, like, do I give up on not even top 1,000, but top 10,000, I'm like, people, like, the gap between these positions is not much, where have you gone the last two weeks? Absolutely, well, I started at about 77,000 two weeks ago, and then had a really good score. I think I had 1277 uh, last week and then into 1244 this week. Uh, and now I'm sitting in around that fifth, top 15,000. So oh. continuing to charge forward as I, as I would like to. Love to get Dez's numbers, but, you, you know, would? champions are champions. Yeah, We've got exactly to chase them. Right. <laughs> Too kind. Right there. Too kind. Um, but it is, mate. It's just another great example. That you're sitting in a position of 15,000 now where you're in a great position to make some moves. And, you know, as long as you're content with your team, you'd be happy with where you're at. So to anyone out there that's, you know, Plus 50K, plus 60K, don't panic. If you're happy with your side, stick to your guns. Uh, also with us today, Maddie the Waterboy, who <laughs> Maddie and I in the About Even League with uh, Tom and Eddie from Hello Sport, Guru, a bunch of us, going into the final game of the round. It was, well, Adam Mariota versus someone else. and No, it was Ad Adam Mariota versus, like, I think, 47 points. Yeah, and Mariota, <laughs> Hosking, a.k.a. me, got injured. Mariota goes to the edge, plays big minutes, scores, and you towed me up. Yeah, it was good. You, you, got, um, you got killed by your own player, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, but he actually almost scored about five minutes before that. He, he got pulled down. I was like, fuck. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I was riding that one home, and I'm, I'm glad I came over the W. And mate, uh, look, if you've beaten me, it's a good score. So you, you've gone all right. Oh, I've gone all right. right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's my been my best week. I, as I said, I said last week that um, I, I've been like plodding along not nicely, but I haven't had a score over twelve hundred yet. Well, I finally got that score. Uh, I got twelve thirty one. So I'm pretty happy with that. You beauty. Uh, for the Kuma Stallions, I was twelve hundred eight points, boys, and I thought I'd drop a little bit, but. Uh, I was looking, I sort of, when I do my checks at the end of each of a Sunday night, I go around the playbook league and the scores were like quite good there. And I was thinking, uh, I was like, oh, geez, like I was one of the lowest scores in that, that crew. Went around to a few other leagues with, uh, you know, some gun super coach players in it, past champions and whatnot. And so that I'm oh, not too bad, but end up going up about 1,800 spots to 5,900 overall. So happy with where we're at. Uh, well placed. And yeah, we, we move on to round seven. Guys, the SC Playbook subscription package, as always, uh, if you would like to get on board that, get access to numerous premium articles on site each and every round of the season, get you into our WhatsApp group. We have late mail threads there, team news threads, go back and forth with the SC Playbook community, team advice, the contributors, there's head-to-head -head specific chats, punning chats, uh, it's got it all. Uh, the full unlimited group major prize as well is available to subscribers only. Uh, to do so and get involved in that, head to scplaybook.com.au and find the subscribe tab in the menu 
on our site. Boys, on today's show, the first topic we'll be talking about not quite buy planning yet. Instead, it'll be when does the attention turn to buy planning? You've got the three major buy, buy weeks in around 13, 16, 19. When do we start looking at that and factoring in numbers? Because uh, I know it's very soon for my side and there was a lot of questions around that also. We're going to have a chat about the week's most trading player, of course, Kale Eero. The question there, though, is he a must-have or can you go without him if you're happy with your cash gen? So far, team list Tuesday, talking points. Zach Lomax to centre. What impact will this have on his Supercoach output? Rando, you've got your Supercoach stats deep dive for the week. Our hot topics, uh, plenty coming in. Of course, had round seven trade and skipper plans. A few questions to wrap it up. Are we getting worried about RTS? The question from Desi, who answered a pre-show, absolutely not. <laughs> Boys, let's get stuck into our first topic of the show. Uh, and it is not buy planning, but when do we start to look at buy planning and when do we factor buy planning into our trade plans for the week? So I mentioned last week, uh, popped up on short notice, but it changed last year. For those three major buy rounds where half the competition is on the buy around origin, uh, your top 13 scoring players score for your team. It's not your top 12. I said 12 last week, apologies. Um, but boys, I know uh, for me personally, I was looking through a few trade-in options this week and it almost just happened. It, it does tend to happen at this time each year where I start to factor in a little bit, but it just naturally started to happen. I started to look at blokes and one of them was Harry Grant. I went, oh, you know, do I go on him now? Or if I don't go in the next few weeks, you've then got origin looming and rests and all these sorts of things. Looked into Harry Grant, the longer term draw, and I was very happy about it as someone who wants to buy him in the next few weeks. Desi, I'll throw to you, and I hate throwing to you because I feel like you're on the show every year when we have this topic, <laughs> and you're just not it's a buy planner. It's always the same answer, oh, no. yeah. Um, no, yeah, I, just, I mean, it's back in the day, you'd have to plan for the buys a bit more when all, all 17 of your players would theoretically count towards their total score. But now when that's only top 13, you really, you don't need to be as aggressive around the buys. Um, normally, I mean, like a... Three, four weeks out, I'll start looking at it. And, you know, generally the target guys, everyone is just bringing in um, around those around those uh, weeks anyway. If you go too early, you know, you, you'll be stuck by injuries almost certainly. It happens every year. So I always try and just wait till a month out. And then if there's guys that I really want in, um, then I'll get them like the must-haves, get them about a month out. And then you can maybe spruce in a few pods, you know, last second. Mm. But over over that month of um, that month of super coach, you can bring in twelve players if yeah. you want to. Um, so yeah, there's that. For me, it's not essential. I don't I don't disagree with the sediment, but you know, like I I do plan towards them quite hard. And you mentioned if you have injuries early on, it can screw up your buy planning. At the same time, if you do leave it to, let's say you've got six, seven players going into the round 13, the first major buy round, uh, you got your trades in store, all that. But you go, all right, I want to get to, maybe it's 11 players, you know, to newbies out there. You don't necessarily have to have 13 on the dot. You can often get away with 11 or 12. It's not the end of the world as long as you're, you're happy with your team. But if you're, all right, I'll go hard in those four weeks, but then injuries happen to there to your players, you can all of a sudden be on eight or nine for round 13 and go, and I'm dropping some serious points. You can, you can. But if that happens to you, you can just pull out a, a boost or you get the extra trade mm. anyway in that round. You so you can bring in four guaranteed players for on that specific round. So if you're stuck with eight, you can still get to 12. You'd be hard-pressed to be stuck with anything lower than... I, I really don't see people struggling to get... 13 players on the on the park even new people to super coach mm. should have a team already that kind of has a lot of players playing in that buy i will say one thing uh, and i've had a look at you know how many i had available for round 13 as my team currently stands and it's pretty good like a lot of the popular players are playing round 13 obviously a lot of those with their clubs playing will likely be on origin duty but it is looking pretty friendly to us at this stage this year. And Rando, I suppose when I talk about myself starting to look towards the buy period and probably more so more so from next week on, which I'll factor in a little bit more, but it's players that I'm trading out. A lot of these cheapies who are starting to peak, it'll be someone like uh, Ethan Strange in the next couple of weeks who will, who will hit his peak price and you go, all right, he's probably a sell. But I've had to look forward. The Raiders play round 13, they play round 16. He plays those two major buy rounds and you go, all right, 
well, I think he's a sell when he hits his five, 550K, maybe 600. You know, do I hold on to him until this for this to get an extra number for those weeks uh, and save those inevitable trades later on? How you, do you approach it, mate? Do you start looking into it early? Are you like Desi and start looking into it a little bit later, a bit more blasé? How do you do it? Yeah, I think I kind of look more like short term and kind of do the buy planning a lot later into the week, around that week 11, around 11, around 12, around 13. Uh, just mentioning it now, um, looking at my team at the moment, I don't think I have too many players who are, you know, going to be missing out. I should fill out that 13 side. Plus, I've got trades on my side as well. As you mentioned with Ethan Strange, um, he's lucky enough to, to miss that kind of buy round. And, and even that round 13 stage, he's got the fins as well. So, mm. fuck, I wouldn't trade Very him out for the world. Him. He'll he'll definitely score, hopefully, even ton up. And then he's got the Tigers. So two really tasty ones where you look at the cheapies and you just got to assess who they're versing in those round 13 to 16 ones before you do consider trading yep. them out. Yeah, and uh, all, all fair boys and... Again, probably another example of where I'm looking forward. I mentioned Harry Grant before, and I, I thought he's going by his supercoach standards poorly. He's averaging 60 for the season. I have Danny Levi, who is about to peak in price. He played like 58 minutes on the weekend for about 15 or 18 points or something. He's made some good coins so far, but when the tries don't roll in for him, that price is going to drop quickly. So I'm like, what do I do at hooker in that second spot? Obviously, you want Harry Grant. He's the man, but... The closer we get to Origin, in recent years, I'll crunch the numbers, possibly even uh, for next week's uh, squad breakdown in the podcast, but Harry Grant often starts the season guns blazing, first tennis rounds, about an 80-odd aver- average from memory. This year hasn't been that way. He's had bugger all attacking stats. And I thought, all right, the closer you get to around 11, 12, during that Origin period, whether he gets a rest from the storm, whether he plays fewer minutes, whether he comes off the bench, just never quite as good. Then I looked at it and I went, Storm have had one buy this season. They've got the buy in round 13, when he'd be on origin duty anyway. They've got the buy in round 16, I believe it is. And then he'll also be on origin duty round 19. So he's essentially not missing another game for the Melbourne Storm this year, barring a resting round origin. I looked ahead to it. Round, this is all coming off the top of my head again. <laughs> I did it this afternoon. Uh, round 14 after origin one, you go, all right, are they on the early back up the storm? Does he have a bye? <clears throat> they play Sunday after Origin 1. They play Saturday after Origin 2, Saturday after Origin 3. So close to the maximal turnaround there. So all of a sudden I start going, you know what? Even if he does get a few reduced minutes or whatever, Harry Grant becomes a better buy in my eyes. So, yeah, boys, just um, we'll get far deeper into the buy planning in coming podcasts, but there were just a lot of people asking. And, yeah, so to, to answer the question, you boys – you know, not till probably around 9, 10, 11 sort of thing. Uh, for myself, I'll really start looking into it in the next probably certainly fortnight uh, what's going on. And I'm already at, am looking into it a little bit. The other one, boys, if there's two people I'm tossing up and one of them's got the round 13 coverage, that's the deciding factor for yep. me. Uh, boys, topic two for the show. KL Iro, the number one most traded in player this week. is $219,000, almost basement price. A negative 76 break even. He scored 97 in his first game of the season and then 46 uh, last week. Now, there are some job security issues there. Sifa Talakai, of course, moved to the bench and into the forwards uh, when they had their injury crisis, the Sharkies. So Iro got his start there, has so far kept it. So good signs, but there's a chance that at any point he could come back in there. Just a lot of people are asking. They're trying to get Iro into their teams and they're going, do I, you know, do I boost for him? Do I use a... One of my two trades on him. On face value, Desi, of course, Eero's a good buy. He's about to make a ton of cash. You can't go really wrong with it. But we did also just see Blaze Talungi in this exact scenario a couple of weeks ago. And worst case scenario happened, and that was a 1K price rise, about 75K. Then he got dropped. Now he's been named on the bench. <laughs> so with Eero, to you, is it just like, just get him in, take the cash. He's a good looking player, a uh, good footballer as well. Um, what do you think? I think you have to err on the side of caution um, after we saw what happened to Zolongi, to be honest. I, I already have him. I started with him. So I'm not in this predicament with uh, a lot of other people. But, yeah, it really depends if your team value is, you know, already up in that 13 million plus mm. range. Then you probably don't need the cash that much more. You, it's time to start bringing in um, pods and guns and, and those sort of plays. I think now is the time to do it. While, you know, a lot of people will continue to chase cash, if you've got that money already, 
then you can bypass someone like Iro who doesn't have the best job security. Though he does look good, don't get me wrong. If he keeps the spot, I would say yes, absolutely. He's a must-have. 97 and 46 in just like base stats from a center. Mm. It's incredibly good. Like he's going to average in that 60 to 70 range if he holds the spot. So it, it really is a tough one to toss up. Will like, he though? Will he average in that 60 range? I think he will. I think he, he looks like he's going to average around that 60, 60 point. Far mark. out. He based 42 last week, 36 week before. Crazy. It's big numbers. For the Sharks, it, he should easy average 60 mm. on that in that spot, I think. Rando? Yeah, I think um, as someone who just traded in, in uh i think he's great for cash generation i think you look at his next couple of games and look at job security cowboys you know the left side left edge for the sharks should prevail over them they got the raiders where we saw him score that 97 earlier and then we got the dragons as well who are just absolutely punishing that left center is just such a valuable player to have against the dragons uh they're scoring at will um, but then the job security becomes a little bit tighter when they've got the Storm Roosters and Panthers three weeks running. And that's probably when I'll get off the Eero train, you don't take care the cash by in. Then, do you? Sorry? You don't care by then, do you? He's no, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Because I think in those next two games, they've already proven the Raiders, they're really weak on their right edge. So they'll hit that left edge all the time. The Dragons, I'm just can't wait for him to score in that game as well. <laughs> and the Cowboys, well, they're leaking tries left, right, and center. So it doesn't really matter either. So um, I think that right now he's. Definitely someone to hold from the next three weeks. I don't see him getting dropped. I don't see the Sharks possibly losing any of those three games. Maybe Canberra in Canberra, um, but they should. he should keep his spot. I don't think there's any point that we'll see a Tulungi situation. The Eels aren't going... Uh, so the Sharks aren't going as badly yeah. as the Eels were at the time. Love the positivity coming over from there, mate. Thanks, very, mate. Very glass up full attitude. And uh, <laughs> the SC Spy, who normally sits in that spot, is full of uh, full of optimism. So it's <laughs> Beautiful. Sort of nice. Maybe the like, energy's coming off. Yeah, he's, he's left it's it around, off. Eh? <laughs> uh, Matty, uh, Iro, we've sort of spoken in the green room, green room pre-show. You're not as confident around that job security? No, I've got him, so I hope he keeps his spot. But I, I reckon once all, they get all their forwards back, you just can't have Sivitalakai on the bench. Mm. And I think Sivitalakai at the moment is a better option at centre for the Sharks. So he might keep his spot for this week or next week, but I think when they get everyone back, uh, I wouldn't be so sure that he keeps his spot. Because mm. the, there's Hamlin ULA back this week. He's back this bench, week. First game of the season. For yep. Nukin to come back. coming back. Royce Hunt's got to come back. I, unless they drop like Oregon Kafusi or, or something, which is possible, but... Yeah, I wouldn't be so confident he's going to keep his spot. Yeah. Would have been interesting what uh, Craig Fiskibben would have done if uh, Sione Katoa wasn't out either because that then sees an opportunity there because Sam Stone Street gets his debut yeah. this weekend. So that would have been really interesting to see. Obviously, this is right side speaking, but just in the, in the sense of where they toss players around. Very hmm. interesting. Yeah. So look... I as I said, you're not going to go wrong with the buy. I think he's a very good buy this week and I think for good reason he's the most trade-in player. But, you know, Desi, you alluded to, to squad value there. And if you're happy with the cash you're generating so far, which I am, I'm starting to screw it. Like, let's get aggressive. Let's make some big moves and, and do that. And, you know, we'll get to my trades a little bit later. But I, as a Hamiso Tabio Fido owner who's gone long term, I've got a lot of cash to play with there. Um, you know, I've got another cash-related move come in. So I'm going... Do I go cheap in Euro or do I just go hard and go someone like Greg Marjor or Tanny Zalesniak or Zach Lomax? So yeah. center um, wings are just scoring way too big this season. Yeah. You have to you have to get the guns in. They're all scoring eighties, averaging in the eighties, which is just unheard of in Supercoach. I'm waiting for Ronaldo to drop off, but he just oh, no. keeps yeah. going from strength to strength. It's crazy. Awesome. There might not be a drop off. <laughs> yeah. So to answer the question though, guys, no, I don't think he's a must have because if you're happy with your cash and your team, he's avoidable. But Bloody hell, is tempting. Boys, team list Tuesday, starting off at the Sydney Roosters. James Tedesco returns. Joey Manu moves back to centre. Let's talk Joey Manu right now. And uh, my heart tears a little inside every time I mention his name because he just <laughs> finds a way to royally screw me over. And it's a shame because I really like him. He seems like a good bloke. He's a great <laughs> footballer to watch, but he just every time. Uh, fourth most trading player, back-to-back -to -back tons. Must be stated, both at fullback. He's now at centre. He's 760k. He has a break even of eight. Desi, with all these great CT dub buys, where does Manu rank for you? Uh, buy this week, or do you think there's better now that he's back at centre? I think there's better, definitely, while he's at centre. Um, 
I mean, the same sort of goes for Lomax as well at centre this week. Probably not his strongest position. Well, definitely not. Wing has been very kind to him, mm. scoring in super coach wise this season. So I think Manu at centre, he's still good. He's still in the top sort of, you know, you would have him in your end team and play him on matchups. That's sort of good. Um, he's probably five or six down on the list, I would say. I'd have guys like Val Holmes at the top way, way before um, Joey Manu, though. Yeah, and, and Rando, upcoming games against the Storm this week, obviously a tough one there. He's got the Dragons in round eight. That's the Anzac Day clash, though. So that's a bit of a different beast. Yeah. Uh, into the Broncos at Suncorp, into the Warriors, into the Sharks, Raiders. Right? So, like, it's a very tough draw, particularly that next month, sort of give or take the, the Dragons clash. But, again, I do think that will be different. I was really keen on him two weeks ago, and that was when he was at centre because it was in that game two weeks ago against the Dogs. Teddy got a concussion early, and he went to fullback and just went bonkers for two weeks. The difference then was 113K. 113k and the draw was also a lot softer at the time. What do you think, mate? Do you think he's worth the cash at the moment, or do you think it's better spent elsewhere? Um, as someone who traded him in purely because I just wanted that sweet, sweet 117 points from him at fullback last week. The inevitable um, and the inevitable 117. I kind of didn't really look with the open-minded, which I probably should have, because you look at Melbourne Storm, and, and you alluded to in the bloke in the bar potty how shot that right uh, edge is for the Melbourne Storm. So I assume the Roosters would go left, um, although they do like to stick with their dominant right side. Mm. Um, but then you look at the Dragons, also weak on their uh, right edge as well, um, that he could be maybe missed for a few points, but I'm sure he'll find it and pick it up. Um, and we know Joey isn't your normal right centre. He roams and he'll get some yeah. carries in every now and then. So I think still like a minimum of 22 against Manly where I generally thought he wasn't actually playing that game because I did not see him at all yeah. on the field. He's still getting 84-63, tunned up twice at centre. I don't think it's a big problem. I think he could be probably better than a Roger Tuivasa-Shek at the moment. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Uh, again, yeah, goodbye, but I just think realistically speaking, you know, you're paying for a... A 65 to 70 averaging player and you're paying 760k for them which is fine like you're not paying 850k it's not you know diabolical but just be aware of, of what you're paying and don't expect these tons to come out again they very well may but uh yeah i'm sort of eased on him a little bit he is available for the roosters in round 13 the first major bye week so i do think it's going to be very important to get him in before that point I, like i'll be looking to probably get him in come round 13, maybe just before that, once that tough draw finishes, and just hold him for the rest of the season. Um, boys, Nelson Asofa Solomona returns for the Melbourne Storm with Tui Kamikamitha out. Joey Chan. Chan the man, he's back. Unfortunately not starting. He's on the bench, but he's got a negative 10 break even. He's got a 59 from his last scoring game. Desi... I held him just because at the price, he hadn't had a price change yet and the negative break even. I was like, I didn't have a reason to move him on. Not a lot changes, but at least he's going to score some points and earn some money. That's it. Go yeah. the chan. Go the <laughs> chan. So let's just, uh, let's hope that, let's hope that one of the back rowers has a little hammy niggle in the, uh, the warm up and he comes out and plays 80 on the edge and owns us a mozza. Just not Eli Katoa. No, it can be Just Ellie. Not Ellie. It can be Ellie. <laughs> not they played, Ellie. They both played 80 minutes last week, both second rows. I don't know where he slots in, honestly. Maybe no, he might no, not no. even get played. He might not. Exactly. Yeah. It's so crazy. Anyway, I'm not, I'm not expecting it. And you know what? I'd prefer him to play no minutes than seven minutes. In seven <laughs> point, so, uh, Blaze Talungi. There wasn't this big talking point of team this Tuesday. Has been named for the Parramatta Eels. Sold by plenty last week. But he's been named on the bench, unfortunately. So another one, you just said Joe Chan might get zero minutes. Parramatta, who have one of the most bizarre bench rotations of all time, week to week, he could get zero minutes. He could get 79 minutes. We don't know. But, yeah, look, it's if you still own him, he's got a low break even, so you should get another price rise this week. Just hope that he comes on and plays a decent chunk of minutes. But barring injury... He's going to be coming on with about 10 to go, doing not a lot, I'd imagine. Yeah, so. you'd hope the Eels get out to a lead for him to come on. Yeah, <laughs> it's not ideal off the bench, but uh, at the same time, if he does get some decent minutes somewhere and scores all right, some good cash incoming. Trey Fuller, named for his second NRL game at fullback in place of Hamiso Tabuai Fido, who is injured long-term with hamstring injury, sell. Cody Nikarim has been named despite a calf injury. At the Penny Panthers, no Nathan Cleary. 
Uh, also, no Taylor May named, uh, despite a few rumours going around that he wasn't going to be picked because of some Instagram post. Uh, that was not to be. Well, I mean, he's been named. So, uh, good news for those who held Taylor May. Scotty Sorensen also returns from injury. He's dropping price nicely in a bloke. I've always wanted to own Scotty Sorensen. He was massive last year. So, as he bottoms out after some injury uh, troubles, maybe one for, the, for that origin period for the Panthers. Solomona for Tarpe at the Tigers is out out of the squad entirely. Don't know if he's been dropped or whatever. Not overly relevant, but I have seen him in a few teams. Uh, the cheapie at the Tigers from the start of the season. Lockie Galvin back from suspension. Let's talk about Galvin right now, boys. Look, I think he's, he's got a break even of negative 50 or 40 or something ridiculous. Heaps more money incoming. Two really tough weeks of footy coming up for him, but just looks the good. So I still think he's a buy this week if you don't own him. Would you consider him playing him out in the country there against Penrith Desi in your 17? I would. I of would. course you would. <laughs> <Get out laughs> of I mean, the, t- the Tigers go pretty well against Penrith historically. I mean, they've, they've upset them, you know... In recent last years. year, yeah, last, last year, I think that's it. <laughs> so, that's think of the pretty big thing. losing streak. It, 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 it can happen, yeah. Um, I'm not going to, but I'm saying it, it is feasible if you if you want to try and you know put a bit of sauce on it. Galvanate is your man. Oh, There's honestly been games in the past where I've not wanted to play like Tom Trebojevic against the Panthers because I just hate playing anyone against uh, that side. I will not be playing an 18-year-old 5'8 in that game. But good to see him back and excited to see how he does go against the uh, the benchmark of the competition. Jaden Campbell out for the Titans. Cannot take a trick, the poor bugger. Injured again. Phil Sammy, a surprise naming at fullback. More on him a little bit later. AJ Brimson, 5'8, stays there. The Titans just looked like an entirely new side last week uh, with Brimo there. Randa, I'll throw to you on him, mate, because he was a bloke in the preseason when he got dual CT dub fullback. I was licking my lips going, to get a gun spine player available at CT dub at a pretty good price, he's around that 500, 550k barrier at the moment. Titans have a tough three weeks coming up as well, but if he can make a fist of it, which he will because he's a gun, he's one that I don't mind in a few weeks' time. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, yeah, Brimo's doing really well, uh, and I think I think this is a trust from Des that they're scoring points with them. I think they've both they've cracked mm. twenty plus in both games that he's been at five eight. So that's the only reason why I don't see him slotting back into fullback position. Um, tough tough stuff uh, though for Tanner Boyd though, who was trying applying yeah. his trade in Queensland Cup. Thought he as soon as he saw Jaden Campbell go down, thought he was in. Um, but I think that's the move from Desi. They're scoring points with AJ at 5'8". He's an absolute threat there. But look at, yeah, you've got to look at the next couple of games. The Warriors uh, at Go Media. Oh, God. Yeah. Wouldn't want to be there. Uh, Melbourne at home and the Cowboys at home potentially. But yeah, there's just... I just don't think you can get onto him straight away right now. Mm, yeah. Now, wouldn't be going early on him by any means, but... Five, sorry, 583k is break even at 58. Three round average of 67. But yeah, look, even after that month, if he's looking the goods, I don't expect the Titans to probably win many games in that streak. But fire, it's tough. Then it goes into the Knights, into the Broncos, into the bye. You know what? I could have kept going. I could have kept yeah. going on the list, but we're on a time limit. Of that. So even the bye is going to be tough you, for him. You, you know what, boys? <laughs> round 14. <laughs> round 14, bunnies penciling in. <laughs> bunnies don't, in, don't bunnies into in, the Tigers. That's probably the do best. Do not bring in Titans play. It's like, it's, it's that simple. Don't bring oh, in yeah, Titans David play. Yeah, No, no. No oh, Fafita this really? year for me. I'm not going to get him. We, didn't last week you say, David Fafita, yeah, you wanted to go early I, on? I just think the Titans, just they're just woeful. Until, until you know, Des shoots a, a rocket up them. They're not going to improve. They're just, they're looking absolutely terrible. Quote, Des Creek, I Dave mean, Fafita, not for me this he's, year. He's still scoring well, but he's, he's not going to be at those levels. I don't think that we saw from, from him in the previous couple of years. I just, he's not going to average around that 80 plus mark. I think 70 is more realistic this year. Um, you know, they'd, he's, they're going to have to go to him. So in theory, he should get, you know, mm-hmm relatively similar amounts of ball because he's he's basically their only attacking avenue in a lot of these games that he's just gonna have to pull it out of the fire for them a lot of the time so in that respect sure but um as it stands you have no interest in owning dave for this not year. not yet not with that run coming up he could tell up manly for sure then warriors storm north queensland mm. newcastle broncos buy then you buy him 
in round 14 against South and then Tigers, and then you've got him for the next couple of tricky um, buy rounds in 16 and 19. Origin as well, though, which is a bit of a spanner. Yeah, but I'm, he's definitely not on not on the buy radar for me until he drops below 700K. If he does drop below 700K, you snap him around that price, but while he's still 800K odd, it's just not worth it when the Titans are this bad. Just quietly, looking at those next two games as well between you know Manly uh, and the Waz, wouldn't mind Desi doing what he did in 2021 and swap Firma and Fafita on different mm. sides here so that Fafita's not running at Hamole, but rather mm. he's uh, taking down uh, Luke Brooks or he's giving hell to T. Marie Martin. I reckon that definitely oh, will help him, give him, get him a bit more points. It was off the bench last week, but wouldn't mind that play from Des. Yeah, mm. God. Good happy days for Bobby Furmore though. Yeah, absolutely. That he's killing it. He's up. he's back to he's back to his best. Yeah, I I honestly don't really care who for feed is playing. I I can't wait to have him in my side. And he's what even like the last couple of weeks he's based fifty five and fifty nine in sixty seven and eighty minutes coming back from injury in an ordinary Titans outfit. I can't wait to get him. <laughs> <laughs> Boys at Manly, your Seagulls, Desi, Ruben, Garrick, Jason Saab, Nathan Brown, Matty Lodge. Back in the team, Benny Chaboyevich out with another hamstring injury just as he looks set to go 80 minutes, 80 minutes, scored a ripping try last week off Cherry Evans against the Warriors. Held on to him, was thrilled about it. Hammy gone. Anyway, he's ended up with about a 76k price rise. Looks a shame for my Supercoach team and those who held, but, you know, the human being himself, Burbo, can't take a trick, does he? <laughs> poor lad, poor lad. It's the Trebojevic at the end of his name. Mate, I traded it's out Dylan Lucas instead of Ben Trebojevic <laughs> last week. And after he scored that try, I was like, I made the right decision. Yeah. Then the news came out. Oh. <sighs> yeah, when I said there was no injury carnage, now that I look at it, Burbo, Hammer, I'm like, <sighs> Stallings copped a bit. Atta Mariota starts on the edge for the Raiders for the injured Zach Hosking. James Schiller, last week's top cheapie, holds his spot. Still no sighting. Of Albert Hopawade after what must have been one of the world's worst burnt hands while cooking because he that hasn't had bad. a look. Did you see in. the photos? No, I didn't. The photos are pretty oh, pretty severe. Did a job on it. Did a, did a real good job. Yeah, well, he made 150k last week. Sheila could make another hundred odd k this. I think a projected score of about 60 nets him another hundred k could be 250k in two weeks. Uh, I would not be tempted in the slightest to play him this week against the Broncos. He's had some soft matchups. He scored some tries. He scored a double last week for about 60 points. I will not be letting him anywhere near my 17. But he is playing good footy and knows how to find the try line. So happy days for Schiller. Connor Tracy named at fullback for the Doggies. Blake Taff named on the bench on return from a head knock. Bronson Sherry retained at centre. More on him later because he looked exceptional. Sammy Hughes starts at front row. A little bit of cash starting to come in from Sammy Hughes. A real slow burn there. Max King though on the extended bench as is Liam Knight a uh, really weird bench name as well so I look I'm not convinced he'll be starting come game day but fingers crossed that he is Kalen Ponga named uh, despite that hit point injury from last weekend boys sounds like expected to play but Barry Tui on Twitter mentioned that uh, there's a bit of doubt around him kicking goals and a decent chance that he won't you know again we're a fair way out from that game on it being on Sunday so a lot to play up to him now and then the question there, though, is Barry, who's one of the best journos in New He's his mail around the Knights is exceptional. Captains. Ponga with that matchup against the Dogs. I mean, that Dogs matchup's looking tougher and tougher each and every week after what they just did down in Melbourne. But Desi, the, the question mark around goal kicking with some good captaincy options this week, how does that make you feel around Ponga as a potential captain? I couldn't do it, no. Not, if I, not after the way he you sort of saw him at the... You know, heading into halftime anyway um, last week when he was kind of just holding it, he was limping around. He obviously got needled up, as you can needle up yeah. the hip pointer injury. Um, but it's just, yeah, it's a worry. I wouldn't I wouldn't captain or, or vice-captain him this week, that's for sure. Without yeah. the goals, it's just not worth it. Even speaking absolutely out of turn here, but uh, I know NRL Physio mentioned last week, like mid-game, I think, saying that chance to get needled up, but if you get hit on the same spot, I don't know if this is like, has to be in the same game and fresh or like can happen over the same week, but can cause a lot of pain. So with question marks over goal kicking, that hip, unless we get to the end of the week and we get confirmation he's kicking and he's all good, that'll change it. It is only Tuesday, but 
Uh, yeah, it puts a little bit of reluctance around him as a potential skipper for me. As a play in teams and owning him, buying him, still happy days, but a bit of concern there. Sione Katoa suspended for a week. Sam Stone Street comes in for debut on the wing for the Sharkies. Murray Taolungi gone with a hammy injury for the Cows. Sammy Valamai comes in on the wing. Boys, Paddy and George Morgan's choice, SCW. I showed these shirts last week. Training shirts slash jerseys. Absolute corkers. Comfy as hell. Well produced. What they're doing, Paddy and George, uh, this season. They've had a ton of these made. And if you do get referred via SC Playbook for them and you settle with them, you'll be getting one of those bad boys to where they're so, so comfortable. Uh, so, guys, if you are interested in getting in touch with Paddy and George, looking to refinance, if you're looking to get into the housing market at all, consolidate any of your debts, buy a car, any of that sort of stuff, reach out to Paddy and George from Mortgage Choice SCW. Normally, it's $129, but if you mention SC Playbook, it's completely free of charge. Flick them a message on Instagram at Pat and George underscore SCW, or you can give them a call on 02-9521-1611. No matter where in Australia you're based, uh, so yeah, get in touch and you could end up with one of those nifty jerseys. Rando, your time to shine, mate. Stats Absolutely. deep dive. Hit us. Uh, I've got three for you. More of a buy, hold and just don't touch at all. Um, <laughs> we'll start with the hold. Obviously, the big news, Zach Lomax going into right centre. Now, he averaged 61 at centre last year. 84, of course, this year at wing. You've got the Warriors that he's coming up against. They're six for conceding to right centres as well at 61, which was his average last year. I think 61 still for people who still have him is definitely a hold on. But if you're looking to buy, I would hold off at the moment. See how he goes at right centre. I think that's the general um, consensus from everyone here. Obviously, fifth traded in, as you pointed yeah. out, um, as we'll get to, which is going to be interesting. But just probably hold off the, uh, the Lomax hype the time being so desi at 755k 26 break even averaging 84 for the season he was a bloke i was you're getting lower and lower on standing i know there, i know right? <laughs> i think i'm standing on the thing. i'm like god i'm short you, you were just like oh you were kind of wild, <laughs> literally i'm like the, yeah the, the vision of this coming out with just a microphone in front <laughs> yeah, of your eyes literally. um desi i was pretty i was very interested in, in lomax this week Less cool on him against the Warriors at centre. On the wing, I'm kind of like, you know what? This dude's just fine, the attacking stats. When you have 25-plus runs a game and bust tackles and kick a few goals, it doesn't really matter. At centre, I'm kind of like, mm, might be happy to wait another week. What do you reckon? Well, I was saying to you boys pre-show, uh, Lomax is just pissing me off. I've owned him for, <laughs> you know, the last five years straight. And then this, this season, I was like, you know what? Screw it. Um, I'm not going to have him. And then he's gone and done this to me, averaging 84 over the over the first <laughs> over the first six weeks of the season. So you know, I've, I've got a lot of love for him, but he's not in my good books right now. But would I would I trade him in? Um, no, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just too pissed at him. But if he was on, <laughs> take the center stuff out of it. If he was wing this week, would you? Uh, nah, I'm not going to bring in Lomax or Manu at all this season. Really? Just out of just out of moral, yeah. Just, I'm just oh, not doing wow. it. Can't wait I'm for just you to retract on that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I wish... Uh, They're I not wi coming in. I wish Ponger and Cleary had uh, hurt you as well. Your team would be looking <laughs> all sorts of trouble. Uh, Rando? Uh, we got for buy. Um, I know, Desi, as a Manly Seagulls fan, you know that's when you're passionate, most passionate. Uh, you're telling me not to believe the Tom Trebojevic smoke this weekend against the Titans. The Titans <laughs> conceding 91 points to fullbacks this year. Three players have tunned up already. The only players not to ton up are Chevy and Blake, you know, least super coach relevant players there. And then you're telling me about his history. And then I look back at his history. <laughs> he averages 112 against the Titans. He's scored 127 and 106 in his last two games. He scored 67 the game after that and then tunned up again. So all I can see and what I've done here is I've, I've bought in Tom Trebojevic and I'm, I'm going to put the captain on him. In more than more than just in spite. I was going to do it anyway, but now I'm going to do it in spite of you, Des. Against your own player, Tom Dravojevic, captain. You've got to do it here against the Titans, I reckon. The experienced, super coach, relevant fullbacks. 
they've turned up against him. You Desi bring him in. has just walked face first. <laughs> I thought he knew his stuff, you know, a champion. And oh, geez, no, no, I looked up to him. In general. Literally, was this down, this low? I was looking up to you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> in general, Manly do not go well against the Titans. I know they don't, they, but Turbo does. <laughs> I'm, I'm just sick of rocking up to Brookville and watching yeah. the Titans beat us. Uh, it's a 42-38 it win. It's yeah. going to be annoying if Des beats us as well. That's exactly what Desi said pre-show. And he goes, you know, we just have a shit record against me. And they're like... Doesn't super coach, it doesn't matter. I'm like, if it's 42 38, Tommy Turbo still gets 150. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm, look, I, I look, better stop pairing you two together because I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm not brave enough to like not vice captain him at a bare minimum. I, I've got the VC on him right now, but I'm just saying, don't expect a, a huge 100 and you know, 70 or 80. What you expect Turbo to score against someone with the Titans' caliber of defense, but. You know, last time Rando said to keep Hutcho. I kept him, I kept him he scored 65, yeah. so you know what? There you go. I'll, Got I'll, him. I'll, I'll, I'll chuck the C on him. I'll tell you what, and I am uh, I am keeping Hutcho. That's one of my holds <laughs> as well because uh, the halfback averages 69 against the Knights. And last time I went with the Titans, who were averaging so much points uh, against a halfback as well. So that's my hold. I was looking to get him out. I was about to get him Schneider in, but... I had to hold on off the pure base of those stats. The last one, obviously, Philip Sammy goes to fullback. And you were mentioning Timmy in the green room that, uh, you know, he's a, he's a Joey Manu like character. He's got the most average runs for the Titans last season, averaging 18 per game. And fullback would definitely suit his style. And he definitely, being a winger, he won't pass it. Uh, <laughs> but I was reviewing. He's played six games, uh, sorry, five games at fullback uh, and only averaged 40 points. Uh, at Supercoach. It's his first time playing fullback since 2020, so he's definitely a more mature player since then. But I don't know. I don't think it's uh, don't think it's worth the bait at the moment with him at fullback. And I'm not too sure what the move is. As I mentioned before, AJ being 5'8", obviously they're generating points. That's how Desi sees it. Um, but I'm not too sure moving forward how long his job security at fullback is. Great winger, but I don't think he... He's going to score the points, so maybe hold back from that. Yeah, I was really surprised they named him there, to be honest. We mentioned, like, Keanu Keeney, poor bugger, like, just like, not see that. Maybe he's injured or something. I don't know about Keeney, but, yeah, I don't see him as a fullback, but I can see him coming out and having a ton of runs yeah. from fullback. So I'd see how it goes. So, uh, very good stuff, mate. Boys, let's move on to a few hot topics for the show. The number two most traded in player for the week, Angus Crichton. 459k, negative 22 break even. He was popular enough by last week. Uh, I said I was happy to see it play out, see him win this spot, see him play 80 minutes again, see him score well. He did all those things and more. 83 points and 79 points the last two weeks. Um, Desi, very hard to ignore. Yeah, straight in. I'd, I'd be surprised if most people out there are not bringing in I mean, he's the number two most traded in, so obviously they are. Yeah. He's he's back on 80 minutes. Um, you know, we've seen him average like in the 70s there on 80 minutes in the past, and he just looks like he's tackle busting and offloading like he like he was back in 2020, 2021 sort of days. So good to see him back at full oh, form right now. And he just it? he terrorized Jack Cogger last week. He absolutely terrorized him. And on top of it, boys. So he played 25 and 26 minutes his first two games of the season in NRL. He started in New Wales Cup, obviously, and I believe he played big minutes there. He based 65 and 59 in the last two weeks. We know he's got attack in him. Like, there's every chance we're buying a keeper for 459k. If he keeps up his 80 minutes and keeps looking good, which there's no reason why he won't, plays round 13, I don't think he will be... I mean, he's playing very well, but I don't think he'll be in the origin frame. Maybe he will be if he keeps this up, but... Uh, yeah, no, look, boys, I, I think it's great, but there was a lot of questions around skipping him, much like the Eero. At the end of the day, we've only got two buys we can go with. Let's say a lot of people are locking in Eero as one buy, um, and then maybe they're locking in another gun elsewhere. Do you see Desi Crichton as a must-have this week? Or, you know, again, around all the same arguments we made before of, you know, people happy with cash generation squads, these sorts of things, you know, can you skip him? No, you can't. Angus Crichton is probably the second best second rower behind David Fafita. Mm. He scored 161. That's his highest score. Mm. You cannot skip a guy who can score 160 in the second row. You just can't do it. I think I tend, I tend to agree, Desi, and, and I think the reason being is that you can skip a cheapie for cash gen because you know they're inevitably going to leave your side. In a perfect world where Angus Crichton keeps this form and keeps the 80 minutes, and like we know he's... At his best, he's the kangaroo's back rower. 
you're keeping in your team and he gets to 700k so not only are you saving you know 200 250 maybe more on him maybe a bit ambitious but he's only one trade like that's the difference between Crichton as a must-have and someone like buying someone like Eero this week so I'm with you I would be very reluctant not to get him in this week so he'll be coming into my side uh boys number three most traded in player Tamare Martin dual 5'8 fullback negative 59 break even 98 and 72 points to start the season for him the Warriors have a really good next three weeks coming up why was he not here three or four weeks ago for us when we all needed five eight? <laughs> because my five eight position is sweet right now with Brown and Galvin fullback I don't want him at fullback oh I can't get him into my side but if anyone has a five eight slot spare I get it uh Rando yeah, I think he's a great he's a great buy, and God, he's looking good with uh, Johnson and Chansey being back in that team as well. Um, I think he's definitely pretty juicy as well. And we mentioned this, um, you know, last week as well with the five eights that there's not many good ones going out. So if you take someone as hot as T Marie's going with 98 and 72, 72 against Manly at Go Media, which was windy, rainy, and all that, uh, that's pretty impressive. I think you got to stick with him. Yeah, hard to go past it, and. I'll go to one of the most traded out players this week because a lot of them will be doing this trade and it, it's Luke Brooks is the most fourth most traded out player this week. I'm a Brooks owner and there's been a lot of super coach negativity around him in recent weeks. I don't know about you boys, but I, or, and I don't know if you own him, but I've been pleasantly happy. So against the Warriors and the Panthers, games where I'm going, shit, like Brooks, he could have a 30 in him here, especially playing second fiddle to Cherry Evans. Knocked out 49 against the Warriors over there in those conditions, as you said, Rando. 55 against the Panthers and looked pretty good there. He now gets the Titans, the Eels, the Raiders and the Dolphins. At 517k, I'm an excited owner, Desi, and I'm happy to hold him. Yeah, it's outrageous that he's fourth most traded out when he's, when he's gone back-to-back 50s against those opponents and now has the Titans. What are people thinking? Like, <laughs> there's 50, he's owned by oh, like 40, 50% of people. Mm. Thousands of people are trading out Luke Brooks against the Titans. He's he's gonna tell them like if he he's gonna take all Tommy Chaboyevich's points, yeah. isn't he? No, he's, he's not. Brooks <laughs> <laughs> will turn up this week. He'll turn up and like oh, yeah. thousands of people will be going. Why did I trade out Luke Brooks against the Titans? This is one of them ones where I'm <laughs> like, I am happy to avoid the the incoming cash with Tamari Martin, save the trade and play Luke Brooks for a few weeks with a great run to come. So, uh, you and our owner Rando. Uh, I'm not an owner of Luke Brooks, so it doesn't really mind me. I'm looking at T. Marie, though, that number three trade, and now that I was speaking about his uh, him against the elements. So, uh, no, nah, I'm not. I'm sticking clear of Luke Brooks, but I don't. I, if I had him, I would hold him 100% with yep. that run. Titans, Eels, Raiders, Dolphins, you know, Raiders, very uneasy. The Eels, you know, they can knock off as well. Yep. I like that. Yep. I like keeping him. Good run for Brooksy there. Boys, Bronson Sherry. 345k, 87 points against Melbourne in Melbourne, a negative 12 break even. It's hard because if you're looking for cash gen around CT Dub, Eero is probably your man this week. But look, you might be an already be an Eero owner. You know, you might be, we'll get to him shortly, but like a Jack Bostock owner, and you might be cashing him in or in the next week or two, Xavier Savage. But Sher- uh, Bronson and Sherry. He just looked awesome. And the fact that they're bringing Blake Taff off the bench and keeping Connor Trace at fullback, as far as I'm concerned, he's won that spot. Des, I'm not buying him, but he's one that I just feel like I'm going to regret it in a month's time when he's scoring well. Mm. What do you think? Yeah, I'm kind of on the... I'm in the same sort of boat at the moment. Um, I've used one trade to get in Angus and then... You know, I know that I've got basically not that much in the bank to get Cleary back in, who I want to get in ace up as soon as he's ready. Mm. And Jerry, Bostock to Jerry is that sort of money-making trade that I can do to net myself an extra 200K in the bank. But it's like, then I'll have six Bulldogs in my team again. <laughs> <laughs> back to square back, one. I'm back to, I'm back to trading in Bulldogs players. Bulldogs like, CT. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like, I mean, the Bulldogs, are, they, they look okay though. So, um you know, it's feasible. I could turn around and, and see myself mm. doing that trade um, come week's end. I really rate him. I just, not that he, you have to play him with that break even, but I just wouldn't feel confident playing him each week either. But far out, he's looked good. Yeah, dogs uh, with the buy next week as well. That's what you've got to keep an eye on. But I think he's really tasty for this night's matchup. We saw mm. what Angus Crichton of all players did to Jack Cogger. Mm. 
Philly Armour Kickout is going to have a field day Jeez, against Jack Cogger yeah. this week. And, you know, Greg Mars, who not the best defensive right edge player, nor is uh, Dane Gagai either. So I just see that left side again tearing up for the dogs this week. But then again, the bye is coming in round yeah. eight. All righty. Uh, number seventh most traded in, Charles Nickel, Klukstad, 682k, 25 break even. His ownership would be next to nothing because he's only a couple of games back from injuries. Uh, three round average of 94 points. Boys, Chance, Superpod. Uh, uh, he was available at CT Dub last year. If he was available at CT Dub now, <laughs> yeah. you'd be getting him straight in, but. Like, who are you trading to get Chance in at fullback? I'm surprised he's the seventh most traded in. I have no Beats idea. Me. Who me. would you? I don't know. Unless I've missed something that's available at <coughs> CT Dub, in which case it's I need to change my trade plans. It's probably people rage trading like Reese Walsh or someone like that. Oh, I wouldn't be trading Reese Walsh either. He's only, he's only fullback, like, killing it. Yeah, so first two games, 88, 96. Dragons, Titans, Knights, oh. Yeah. He's going to score well, but I don't he, know. He will score well, but look, Caelan Pong and Tom Travoy, it's two blokes we just mentioned with yeah. great draws coming up. I know who I want to be on. Uh, boys, Xavier Willison, number 10, most traded in, 336k, negative 12 break even, scored 80 points in 41 minutes last weekend against the Dolphins with a try and a line break. I don't own him. I won't own him. Jeez, he passed the eye test. He looked phenomenal last weekend. Uh, Desi... Is he a bloke yet? I mean, you could. I know he's got a low break, Evan, Sam Hughes, but you could maybe go Sam Hughes to Wilson, strengthen your front roll a bit. Any, what are your thoughts? Um, no, I, I don't think that's that's the play. Payne has to back in coming weeks yeah. as well. No, I'm, I'm not about it. I no. think he's, you know, he's a decent shot at starting. Max King still, you know, he's got a broken hand, yeah. so I'd be surprised if he comes in um, and starts. So... I, yeah, for me, it's just front row is still kind of just a wasteland position. Yeah. I'm happy to let la, a few nuffs sit there as well <laughs> um, and then just bring in Haas as soon as he's back, pretty I, much. I thought the same, mate, around Willis, and I was like, I'm not wasting another trade this season on a mid-range, not even mid-range, like a cheapy to mid-range front row forward. I'm like, I've got Karen there and May doing a great job. I'm like, as long as they're fit, I won't be moving anything. So uh, if you own him, you're licking your lips, killing it. Uh, Sean Bloor, number 13th, most traded in 489k, zero break even, 63 points in 64 minutes and 87 in 80 minutes on the weekend. I don't think you could argue that he's a good buy. And uh, look, I wouldn't say he's cemented his spot on the edge there, but scored a match winner last week and he just looks good. So I think it's a pretty safe spot. My question here is, could you take him over Angus Crichton, do we think? No, no, nah, nah, keep Angus Crichton. Angus. I mean, they're both 80 minute forwards, but as you mentioned, we did see Joe Chan come onto the, the yeah. field. You got a Howarth as well, knocking on the door of, uh, of first grade on top of that. So his, if anyone's minutes are going to decline, I think it would be Bloor's. But at the moment, you'd probably stick with Crichton. He'll, he'll have 80. If Crichton wasn't a buy this week, I'd probably jump on Sean Bloor, but that's not the case. Yep. Uh, boys, most, third most traded out this week, Jack Bostock, 513k. Probably not a lot to touch on here. 54 break even. He's made a ton of cash for us. I think it's onwards of 200k. 60 point per game average. Uh, with that 54 break even, time to move on the next week or two. Not an urgent sell, but Desi. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I'd Boys, let's get stuck into our trades and skippers for NRL Supercoach round seven. Uh, Des, I'll start with you, mate. What are you thinking? Um, trades, I'm going to go Burbo, who's up in my second row, mm. to Angus. And then second trade would potentially be Bostock to Bronson Jerry, but I'm holding off on it at this stage. Uh, the buy for the Bulldogs next week's a bit a bit scary for it. You don't really but need to... The thing is with, with Sherry, sorry to cut you off, mate, but the negative 12 break even, like, you don't need to play Sherry next week. It doesn't really matter. You yeah, exactly, class, exactly right. right. Yeah, it's it's mainly just... I need the cash to bring Cleary back in. Mm. You know, I've stacked up my team elsewhere, bringing in like Dylan Brown, Katoa, Olukawatu, these sorts of guys over the last few weeks. So I need to, despite having all the cheapies, might just have one more in me, which is Jerry. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, you said you're very happy already owning Eero. Yeah. Um, Rando? Um, I've gotten rid of rid of uh, Burbo, obviously with the hamstring injury, it's time to jump out and jump in on the Kale Iro bandwagon. I was pretty annoyed that I didn't jump on Schiller 
uh, last week and get that cash gen. Hendo, what I are you know, doing? I know, I know, I know. But Why? I, 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 who do I put in instead? Someone. Oh no, I brought Joey Minor in instead just yeah, for that 117. Right so hopefully that's all forgiven. But no, Ira, I'm not going to miss out this time. And I've taken out Pappy for Tom Dravojevic. Was getting pretty impatient with Pappy. Uh, and Turbo with the Titans and a bit of an easy draw coming forward. I'm going to relish on that. Well, on that Iroh chat, the, um, if you did, uh, like our friend over here, not get James Schiller for his imminent 250k, <laughs> I would be getting... Is that all? Is that all? <laughs> <laughs> I would be getting Iro in. Uh, Maddie, what are you looking at, mate? Yeah, same as Desi. I'm, uh, ben Travoyevich is in my second roller, so I'll him out, Angus Crichton in. I probably won't do another trade. I've, I've been doing trades mm. left right and center all year so i might just cool the jets a bit um so yeah i'll definitely do that one beautiful uh, i saved one last week happy about that one i'll go josh kerr to Crichton this week just he's got a bigger break evan kerr uh, uncle wayne does not want to play just fluctuating minutes i thought he'd been so good this year i didn't play him on the weekend fortunately but played about 20 minutes um anyway before he hemorrhages potential cash Kerr to Crichton, Hammer, I've got a decision, boys. I can basically, with his cash, go anyone from Dallin to Greggy Marju to Lomax. I wanted Marju if he was on the left. I've got a, a big deep dive into Greg Marju on beers and break-evens, left feet, right nights, point scoring last year, this year. I'm going to save that one for beers and break-ends for tomorrow, so I'm going to be that guy, and I'm going to make you listen to that if you want to uh, find out that one. But uh, it's also in my squad breakdown analysis on scpaper.com.au. So if you don't listen to it, you can go on the website. Either way, you've got to click. Um, <laughs> boys, or Dallin with tennis lesson out tempts me. He's been going well even without Chance there. Chance back, got a double last week. If you could have the pick of the litter, I'm already a Val Holmes owner. Uh, I've got Roger in there. I've got a pretty strong CT dub. Desi, who, who's the pick? It's a, it's a coin toss, this <laughs> one. It really is. Mm. I would probably lean towards Marzio though. Um, DWZ, he's, you know, if you go back and look at his, like, amazing year from last year, he only had a few massive scores in there. He still, there were still 30s and 20s in his game. He does have a low one in him. Yeah, he does have the low ones. Marzio just really does not have those low scores in him. He's, the lowest he'll get is, like, what he got on the weekend, yeah. essentially. That's his... That's his floor. It's only up from here for Greggy Marzu. Greggy's ceiling concerns me on the right edge, though. I agree. He's definitely going to be more consistent. I think I think Dallin's ceiling on the right wing of the Warriors, who are humming with a soft draw, not to also have a good draw, but is bigger, but Marzu is going to be more reliable. It's a fair assessment. What do you reckon, Rando? I think as a try-scoring threat, you definitely go Dallin. I think Chansey in the side, he's already proven the right wing has gone in in each game that he's been back. Um, and then you don't have to look too far to see exactly how many tries Dallin or Tenny Lesniak scored uh, for ga against games last season. So I think DWZ, without spoiling the Marzu deep dive, because I am well aware of the numbers, uh, I think DWZ. Yes. Even there, like he's based in 33 this season. Like it's good numbers. Um, that's Dallin. So... He's, I owned him in the back end of last year. I think it started with a bang from memory, like a hat trick on Friday. I brought him in last minute, then petered out a little bit, but he was fun to own because that Warriors right edge, just, they just hit it the whole time. Um, Desi, your skippers for this week. I'm going VC on turbo after, after, <laughs> round, after round. Got him. Nah, I, I was oh. always on him, let's be real. Um, and then I've got the C on Hines, actually. In a week where I think a lot of people will probably be captaining elsewhere. Mm. I've, chucked, Cowboys I've, sharp park. I've chucked it on Nico at Shark Park, yeah. It's funny, like, if it wasn't for his slightly slower start this year, there'd be no eyebrows raised to that. You'd be like, Nico, Cowboys, Shark Park, of course. So I like it, because not many would do it. That's it. Rando? Uh, I'm VCing Dylan Brown. Three Eels players tunned up against the Finns last time they met. Dejan Arce got 91 at 5'8". Obviously, Dylan Brown was out... Um, Due to his mm. disciplinary actions. Um, so, yeah, I'm VCing D Brown and, as I mentioned before, captaining Turbo. Big on him. I'm doing the exact same there, mate. Same. Same I well. didn't. I didn't look at the screen when I was thinking about yeah. that, by the way. <laughs> um, boys, Rando, Patreon, you've started one up. You've gone hard. You've got some bloody good shit in there as well. I've seen it. Talk yeah, to us. absolutely. Uh, started up last week with Patreon, three different tiers of membership. We've got the supporters membership, uh, which just gets you basic stats, stats on demand, part of the community, uh, also merch discounts as well. Then we go up one to the Hot Boys, which is basically a full uh, 
spreadsheet, or not a spreadsheet, more of a document of all the top stats for teams, head-to-head records, try scorers, mm. and super coach watches. Uh, and then we go into the big one, the $10 a week uh, Patreon, the Randos Legends side. And that way you can get all the analysis in full from uh, games back as far as 2017 head-to-head, last three-year records, because we do like looking at latest form rather than all-time form. Uh, we also got try analysis, where play, where teams are scoring them, where they're conceding it, up into the position as well, which has been really handy for a couple of people on the Patreon already. Um, and then, of course, we got that super coach analysis of where players, uh, sorry, what positions are scoring the most uh, against different teams. And that's not just centers, it's left centers, right centers, uh, that granular. And on top of that, the new update this week, which um, a lot of people are going to love, is that we've got the last five try scoring records against the opposition for each player and the super coach scores as well. So you can see that Des was wrong and that Turbo <laughs> does have a great record against the Titans. I'm not going to sub to you <laughs> unless, unless Turbo goes over 120. Oh, my God. Gosh. Turbo, I'm going to cop it on Twitter, Turbo I reckon. Plays, <laughs> Turbo played uh, off the bench seven minutes in uh, 2015 for Manly against the Titans for seven points. So historically, <laughs> Desi's right, but your dad is more recent. So more recent, right. yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, mate, where can they find it? Uh, you can check it out in my link in bio on all my socials or you can go to the Patreon, Rad and Stats Guy. That's where you'll find it. Beautiful, mate. Boys, that trip into some questions and then wrap it up. First question from Zach, uh, and I thought this was a ripper because it's very relevant to a lot of people. 500 grand in the bank awaiting for Cleary's return was expected to be this week against the Tigers. It is not. Do I play the waiting game or do I splash the cash elsewhere for, say, a gun CT dub or a 2RF? Currently has Heinz and Hutcho, currently his halfbacks. So we can answer that, but my question more so is, like, I... I mean, I've got a similar sort of thing. I, I can go hammer down to like an Eero or a hammer down to a, a Sherry, just have a bunch of cash awaiting Cleary's return. Um, if you've got it sitting there, do you spend it and hope that he's back next week or do you hold off, Desi? I'm a fan of spending cash. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, just, I always try and like max out my team value. Uh, this year I've actually, you know, been a bit more conservative in terms of keeping money in the bank, but I normally start with the max salary cap and just try and continue trading, you know, not building up cash in the bank. There's no point having cash in the bank, you know. If he was guaranteed to be back next week, I think you could hold it. There's no guarantee. Like if you hold that yeah. and he doesn't get picked next week, you're like... Center wing's scoring so well that you may as well just get the guys in form. Um, clearly, he's no guarantee to return with a, a big bang, you know. He could he could just ease back into it, into it uh, with a few, you know, 50s and 60s mm. sort of scores. So get the guys in form. Spend the money. Also, 500k in the bank, that's like, that's a lot. Yeah, you want to get the points. You want to get some points as well. You don't want to waste it. Boys, question from Mooselon. Danny Levi needs shifting, but who is the best option? What I wanted to sort of touch on here was just what our plan is at Hooker. Uh, And I'll start with my one quickly. And at this stage, next week, I'm thinking about going Danny Levi to Harry Grant, who should be bottoming out around that hopefully 650, 660k mark. That's a good price for him. Um, Desi, we sort of spoke pre-show and you're sort of saying two gun hookers, do you want to run that? I'm like, well, Jaden Braley's an option. If he comes out and plays big minutes again this week and scores well, I could go Levi to Braley for some cash and have a solid backup hooker. That is an option. But outside of him and if Braley isn't a good buy, Danny Levi's about to start hemorrhaging money unless he starts scoring tries again. So I'm kind of like, I need to do something with him. So I'm thinking, Harry Grant, um, you're a Lussick owner, Rando? Yep. You're a Levi or Lassie? Lassie. Lassie. So yep. same situation. What are you thinking at Hooker? I'm yeah. I'm on the Harry Grant train. I'm. I would almost. I was almost about to. You know, get him in this week. In fact, um, but I think it's it's probably more viable for me to go both Dr. to Jerry instead and and bring in the like get some cash in the bank. But if I if I did my strategy of just pe- like maxing out my salary cap each week, I would bring in Harry Grant this week. Mm. Um, because I think he's about to fire. Like you said, he's he hasn't had any attacking stats at all this year. Um, he's still owned by about 25% of people. So, you know, I, I assume, yeah, it's a, it's a tricky one. But, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm probably going to bring in Harry over the next fortnight, I would say, but not this week. Rando, what are your plans at Hooker? Uh, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting just to see how Harry Grant goes. Obviously, you've got Pappy, Hughes and Munster and that whole spine playing together for the first time in, what, two years. 
And I think maybe we're seeing the side effects here that Harry Grant doesn't have to be a chef in the kitchen. He can hold yeah. off and just give service. And I feel like that's what he's doing. So I'm not rushing into Harry Grant whatsoever, but if they start ticking over and Harry Grant starts to find where he can kind of provide that spark in attack end of season when he's probably a bit cheaper than what he is now. That's I think when I'll be attacking, but at the moment I'm pretty happy with Appy and Lusick. Yeah. Uh, question from Beach. RTS out, Lomax in. We've spoken at Lomax, but the question is around Roger Tuvasa Shek. And when I mentioned this uh, pre-show, Desi, we nearly came to blows. You scoffed at me. <laughs> RTS is averaging 60. The elite CT dubs this season, I know it's only small sample size, but are in that 80 plus category. Not saying that'll keep up, but we went through last year's averages and again, all the best um, CT dubs were that 70 to 80. RTS with a 60 average, my concern for Roger at the start of the season was that he's playing left centre for the Warriors, which for the same reason that I'm buying, I want to buy Dallin on the right wing. The left edge just doesn't see a lot of good ball. It's all down the right. And I think we're seeing his super catch average impacted by that. So I suppose, yeah, my question... Do you see RTS as being a keeper this year or do you think there's going to be a point where he's moved on? There's probably a point where he's moved on, but it's not It's not round seven. I mean, if this guy's trading out RTS to Lomax already, you know, his team must already be perfect. If, if that's who he's trading out, RTS is not on... He shouldn't be on anyone's radar to trade out. If you're scoring 60 in the centre wing, it's not bad. It's, it's like, you know, it's, it's a tier below keeper. But it's, it's not keeper levels. You're right. You need to be averaging 70 mm. in the center wing to be a keeper. We went through and looked at it. But 60 is still, it's still feasible. You're not, you're not losing that many points a week, realistically. You're losing 10 points a week to the guys averaging 70. Yeah. So you can make it up elsewhere. Yeah. Look, I, I do tend to agree. I, I, I don't think he's near enough keeper potential at the... Oh, sorry, there's keeper potential. He's not near enough keeper scoring at the moment. Uh, more importantly, boys, as I said, just left centre at the Warriors. It doesn't get a lot of uh, quality ball. Would I be selling him now? Hell no. I'm like 60 and average at centre. It's hardly a problem in a gun team that has a softer draw coming up. Yep. So, uh, Rando, Angus Hewitt asks, thoughts on Selwyn Cobo as a pod with a great upcoming draw for the Broncos? Yeah, I think he's been really good. He's been usually quiet in the try scoring ranks. He did score a couple of intercept uh, tries last week as well. That definitely helped his scoring, but definitely someone to watch. You just got to watch out for Adam Reynolds to come back because then that just becomes a right right side dominant yeah. Broncos outfit. At the moment, you're reaping the rewards because Ezra Mam's leading the side around. Um, so a good pot option right now, but maybe might need to, to let him go in the future. He's definitely not a keeper. Question, not a question, more of a screw you, Tim, from Dylan <laughs> Borthwick. I'd like a public apology from the panel. It was more so me for dissing the dogs outside backs. Quote, you don't score Hatties playing for the dogs. Back-to-back -back highest scoring players overall with back-to-back -back Hatties. Love the work, Timmy. No. Anyway, it was two... It was that Kiraz I didn't think was going to score hat-tricks. The Fox is a specialist for Hatties. So he actually scored a hat-trick for the dogs last year. So... Look, I do apologise for bagging the dogs a little bit, and I'm glad Ads Darusi wasn't on the potty. Um, but two enormous scores on the trot for the doggies. I still don't think Kiraz is going to get one, particularly if he's at centre. That's what we were talking about. But I do apologise to doggies for, for being a little bit critical on him. And, yeah, Fox, we had like six line breaks or something. So yeah, that left wing at the doggies at the moment, good spot to be outside, kick out of the way he's playing. Um, boys, Hank Scorpio, Brown to Tamari Martin, <laughs> worth a trade. He's a legend, Hank. Hank Scorpio. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no. uh, oh, Brad Parker's written in. Brad Parker. <laughs> um, Dill Brown uh, hit form last week. Like, he, he came did. good. He, how are his updates also? He went from, like, mid-60s to, like, 86 or something. Um, Rando, you said you were keen on Tamari, eh? but it wasn't via Dill Brown, was it? No, nah, it wouldn't be via Dill Brown. I mean, Dejan Arcee coming into that side, Dill Brown was a different ball player. Yeah. Um, I'll just keep him and, boy, you got to keep Brown for this Dolphins matchup. He's going to score big this week. Mm. Yeah, I'm holding Brown for sure. I said there's not a lot of great 5.8s going around, so no, thank you. Uh, a question from Luke. I'm thinking drinky to CNK. Was with a juicy draw in CNK. We spoke about um, CNK, but I wanted to throw to you, Rando, for drinky because we mentioned the great matchups for Ponga and the Knights, for Turbo and the Seagulls in coming weeks. Drinky has two tougher ones coming up. He's got the Sharks at Shark Park this week into the Panthers up in Queensland next uh, the week after. Um, after that, though, the draw's really good. 
are you tempted to go drinky to either of those boys or because you've got turbo so are you tempted drinky to ponga or are you happy to get through these two weeks for that softer draw i think i'm going to ride it with drinky yeah. as a res reserve um panthers the panthers is at home which i do like more than him at penrith i think he was going to score bloody 15 if he was playing at penrith sharks is going to be tough at shark park but they're they're where they he is scoring the points for the cowboys so if the cowboys are any chance he's gonna have to score big uh he had a a shocker against the broncos i thought he had a shocker against the broncos he ended up scoring 60 70 points so i i think he's a keeper cnk yes he started the season well yes he's got a soft draw um but i'm just i'm gonna hold out the sharks panthers game because then it's fins titans rabbitos tigers And I'm liking all those matchups. Yeah, I, I'm with you, mate. I'm glad I'm not in that position. I'm happy where I'm at with my <laughs> fullbacks. Oh, I see the tempt. I definitely wouldn't go drinky to CNK. I see the temptation of drinky to like a KP or Turbo though. But I think I'd ride him with you as well. He's killing it. Um, boys, one from Andrew Turvey. Hey, boys and girls, love your work. I have Talakai in draft. Is he a hold or a drop? It's a ten-team league, so replacements are slim. Just hold two weeks, mate. If uh, if Talakai starts again in a week or two, you'll be kicking yourself if you've gotten rid of him, especially if there's aren't a lot of options out there. So give him a week or two. If Eero kills it and you go, you know what, Talakai's not going back to the back line anytime soon, you can get rid of him, but give him a little bit of time. Uh, Gus Winfrey, option one, Hammer to Dallin with Tennis Lesniak, or two, Hammer to Radley and Drinky to CNK. Desi, of those two options, which one would you be taking? Option one. Way better, isn't it? Yes, it is. Let's go, Darlin. Uh, <laughs> and last one, boys, before we wrap it up. BC producer, who wins in a foot race? Jackson Hastings or Drew Hutchinson Rando? This is disrespectful for Jackson <laughs> Hastings. I reckon, did you see him off the left foot against the Roosters? Uh, definitely Hasto. Definitely Hasto. Drew Hutchinson probably does it in about 15, 16 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon it's a bit closer than that. Oh. Probably inches in it. <laughs> A blade of grass in this one. Uh, I think Joey gets him. Former yeah. Sydney, former Sydney oh. Roosters centre, Drew Hutchinson. Matty? Nah, I'm with you, Randa. I reckon, I reckon Hastings has him covered easily. Like, it's not even close to me. Oh, <laughs> no, Hastings should have a broken foot or something. Uh, <laughs> too many ankle injuries. <laughs> Boys, we'll wrap that up for NRL Supercoach Round 7, the SC Playbook Podcast. Desi, thank you as always, mate. Cheers, boys. Rando? Thanks for having me on, as always. Cheers. Alrighty, boys. Thanks. Good luck this weekend.